Okay, so how much do you actually know about this symbol right here? And I'm talking about this symbol. Now, a lot of you might be saying, come on, Mr. Two Math Man, that is the square root symbol. Well, as it's written, that is a square root, or maybe if I put a number in there, we're talking about the square root of four, which uh, hopefully most of you know uh, the answer is two. But really, this symbol implies so much more in mathematics. So let's go ahead and see how much you actually know about this symbol and uh, see if we could solve this problem without using a calculator. So what we have here is the cube root of 80. All right, not the square root, the cube root of 80. All right, so once again, no calculators, but uh, we do have a multiple choice question. And let's take a look at our answers. So A is 8. B is the square root of 2, C is the cube root of 16, and D is 2 times the cube root of 10. All right, so if you can figure this out, go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. I'll share the correct answer in just one second, and of course, I'm going to solve this problem step by step. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And if you need help learning math, Check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoy this content, make sure to like and subscribe as that definitely helps me out. All right, so once again, here is the problem. And it seems pretty easy, but again, we're not using our calculator. So the cube root of 80, well, what's the answer? Well, let's go to take a look at it right now. The correct answer is D, which is 2 times the cube root of 10. All right, now, if you got this right, you definitely get a happy face and the A plus, and congratulations, because you can't solve this problem if you don't really know a lot about this symbol right there. Now, what is this symbol called in math? Well, some of you are going to say, hey, Mr. D2 Math Man, that's the square root symbol. Well, this is a square root, but this is not a square root. This is a cube root, right? This symbol in mathematics is called a radical. So for uh, those of you out there that might be taking like a uh, algebra course or some math course, and you want to know where you study this symbol, okay, whether it's a cube root or a fifth root, look under the chapter or unit called radical expressions, radical equations, et cetera, et cetera. All right, so let's go ahead and get into this right now. And the first thing that we want to realize is that if you do have to take math exams, and uh, some of you out there unfortunately still have to take math tests and math exams, you know, never leave a multiple choice question, you know, blank, right? You know, always take a guess. So I like to emphasize that because uh, remember, when you are taking a test or an exam, the name of the game is to get as many points as possible, right? And I can tell you right now, your math teacher wants you to pass the exam, even if you don't know the concepts that well. Believe me, they don't like to uh, uh, fail anyone, all right? So here, you got a one out of four chance to uh, you know get the right problem or get you know uh, pick the right answer. So here we have a cube root. So if at least you know that, you might be saying, well, I don't know, uh, maybe the answer has uh, a cube root in it. So C is a cube root, and D also has a cube root in it. Okay, so if you're thinking in those terms, oh, those actually, or that's actually pretty good logic. So one of these is obviously the correct answer. D is the correct answer. But, uh, you know, take a guess and try to take an educated guess. Now, we don't have a calculator here. So, uh, you know, that's going to make things a little bit more complex. Because if you did have a calculator, what you could do is figure out what the cube root of 80 is into your calculator and then try to estimate the answer over here. But you got to know something else about your calculator to figure out the cube root of 80. All right, now I'm going to get to that in just one second. But uh, let's go ahead and first uh, make a distinction here between a square root and a cube root. All right, so here we have the square root of 16. All right, so what is the square root of 16? Hopefully, uh, most of you are saying, hey, the answer is 4, Mr. D2 Math Man, and you would be correct, okay? But uh, really, what is the square root asking us? Well, it's saying, hey, what number times itself gets us back to 16, right? So it has to be the same number, okay? So obviously, 4 times 4 is 16. Now, some of you might be saying, hey, Mr. D2 Math Man, how about negative uh, 4? Because negative 4 times negative 4 is also a positive 16. Well, when you have a question like the square root of 16 all by itself, 
the correct answer is just positive 4. Okay, uh, This is called the principal square root. You're not going to have positive and negative 4. Okay, That's a whole different uh, discussion. Uh, if you had an equation like x squared is equal to 16, I would take the square root of both sides. x is equal to positive and negative 4. So when you're solving like quadratic equations or other type of equations, then you use the positive and negative stuff in terms of uh, the roots. Okay, But when you're just taking a simple square root, it's only the positive version of the answer. That's called the principal square root. Okay, so hopefully most of you or all of you uh, understand the square roots of numbers. That's pretty easy. But uh, here again, uh, the square root of a number here, okay, this radical, there's technically a 2 there, okay, which kind of implies, hey, what number, what a number times itself, okay? You can only multiply these numbers, uh, you know, two times. In other words, this number times this number, it's the same number uh, that gets us back to this number, 16. Well, that's the square root, okay? But here I have a cube root, all right? So what is the cube root of 27? Well, this is saying what number times itself three times, okay? Now, this number right here, this little number, is basically implying we have to take this number, whatever it is, and multiply it by itself this many times to get back to this answer, okay? So the cube root of 27 is what? Well, of course, it's 3, because 3 times 3 is 9. 9 times 3 is 27. All right, so the cube root of 27 is is 3. All right, now this little number, this 2 right here in this square root, we don't write this, okay? Typically, we're just going to write a square root like this, but this number really plays an important role. And uh, when you really get into studying radicals, there's things called radicand, index, etc., etc. All this is very important, but I just want to uh, kind of make the distinction between a square root and a cube root. Okay, so there's a lot of other things that I want to uh, quickly cover before we get to the right answer or how to, you know, actually solve the correct answer. And the next thing is the following. Okay, so when we have the square root of 16, we can actually express uh, radicals, okay, as what we call rational exponents. Okay, so the square root of 16 is actually equivalent to 16 to the one-half power. Now, if you remember, there's a little 2 right here. We don't write it. But to this number, whatever it is, is going to be the denominator of a fraction where 1 is the numerator. Okay, So if you can go into your calculator and go 16, now you have to know how to take powers in your calculators. Now, you're going to be looking for a button like this. It's an upside down V. It's called a caret. There's another button. Uh, you know, typically, it'll look like Y to an X or an X to Y. But this is how you get powers. So you uh, you want to put in 16, hit one of these buttons, and then parentheses, 1 half, and parentheses, and then hit Enter, and you're going to see you're going to get the answer of 4. Okay, so you can take any radical problem and express it as uh, something called a rational exponent. Okay, so here we're talking about powers. This is a radical. This is a power. But this is what we call a rational exponent. Okay, rational, that word in math, means a fraction. Okay, so let's go ahead and apply that same concept to this problem, the cube root of 27. So this problem is equivalent to 27 to the one-third power. Again, this little number up here is going to be our denominator, and the numerator is 1. Okay, so I'm kind of covering a good amount here because I want to walk. I want to make sure you walk away from this video understanding a good amount about radicals, cube roots, and square roots. Okay, now let's say we didn't have a calculator. How could we get the answer uh, with rational exponents? Well, what we can do is try to think of these uh, bases. Remember, when you have a power, you have an exponent and you have a base, or like 2 to the third power. This is the exponent. That's the base. The entire thing is a power. But if we can express the uh, base of the power, now in this case, the base here, I'm going to go ahead and just highlight this, is 16, and the base over here is 27. But if we can express those bases as powers themselves, well, we can easily figure out the answer without using a calculator. All right, so 16 is the same thing as 4 squared. So 16 to the 1 half power, remember this is the same thing as the square root of 16, is the same thing as 4 squared to the 1 half power. Now, there's a property of square roots. If I have 4 squared to the uh, third power, what this means is what? We'll take 4 squared and multiply it by itself three times, right? So that's what 
cubing a number means. But if you look here, 4 uh, squared times 4 squared times 4 squared, how many 4s do we have? We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. This is equal to 4 to the 6th power. But there's a simple thing that we can do is simply multiply the outside exponent to the inside exponent. So 4 squared to the 3rd power is equal to 4 to the 6th power. Okay, so again, I'm covering a lot here, but uh, by the time you finish this video, you will be a certified professional expert in the area of uh, square roots, radicals, at least you know, you'll know you know a good amount for sure uh, to cover or to be able to handle a lot of different type of prompts. But here we have four squared to the one half power. I can simply uh, multiply that outside exponent to the inside exponent. One half times two is what? That's one. So our answer is four to the first or four, all right? Again, Remember, the question here was the square root of 16. The answer is 4. Okay, so over here, remember we can write the cube root of 27 as 27 to the 1 third power. Now we can express 27 as what? 3 to the 3rd power. Okay, so this problem is really 3 to the 3rd power to the 1 third power. 1 third times 3 is, of course, 3. Okay, so now that you understand about uh, the difference between square roots and cube roots and rational exponents, well, uh, we need to kind of uh, review another property here, and let's go ahead and talk about this problem right here. Okay, so this is the square root of 20. Okay, now, whether it's the square root of 20 or the cube root of 20 or the fifth root of 20, it doesn't make a difference because the property that I'm going to show you relates to radicals, okay, this symbol, okay, not only uh, uh, square roots, right? Now, of course, we're dealing with a cube root in our actual problem, but I'm just going to go ahead and give you a simple example of a square root. Okay, so what is the square root of 20? How could we simplify this without a calculator? Well, we need to understand this property, okay? We can think of 20 in terms of its factors. So 20 is the same thing as 2 times 10, right? So the square root of 20 is equal to the square root of 2 times 10. But uh, there's other factors of 20 as well, okay? So we'll, the square root of 20 is also equal to the square root of 4 times 5, right? So both of these are correct, but uh, one of these um, uh, setups here is way better than the other. Okay, now which one do you think it is? Well, let's go ahead and talk about that right now. Okay, so here, uh, when we write the square root of 20 as the square root of 4 times 5, well, there is a great property of radicals, okay, not only square roots, and that is the following. We can take one big square root uh, over the factors and break it up over independent little square roots over each uh, factor of this number. Okay, now that's a lot of mumbo jumbo. It's actually easier just to kind of see it. So the square root of 20 is equal to the square root of 2 times 10, but now I can write this as its own individual square roots, right? So the square root of 2 times the square root of 10. This is a property of not only square roots, but of radicals, all right? So this property works in cube roots as well. Okay, now here, I have the square root of 2 times the square root of 10. Well, you know, I don't really know what the square root of 2 is. I know it's some decimal, and I don't really know what the square root of 10 is. That's some sort of decimal as well. So let's go ahead and take a look at this setup, right? So we know that the square root of 20 is also equal to the square root of 4 times 5. Well, we can break up uh, this one big square root into two individual square roots, right? So the square root of 4 times 5 is equal to the square root of 4 times the square root of 5. Now here, I do know what the square root of 4 is equal to. That is 2. So we can simplify the square root of 20 as 2 times the square root of 5. And this is something that you absolutely need to understand in uh, not only basic math, but uh, in algebra as well. Matter of fact, uh, what I'm showing you here is typically taught in an algebra course, right? So if you haven't taken algebra, no big deal. You know, if you're understanding what I'm telling you, you're actually learning quite a bit about radicals and square roots. Okay, so let's go ahead and take the next step, which of course is having you quickly subscribe to my YouTube channel before we put all this knowledge together and solve the problem. Now, I've been on YouTube for a good, like, 14 years. Well, I started my channel 14 years ago. It's crazy, but I really didn't do a lot with my channel for many years. I would post an occasional video here and there, 
And uh, it wasn't maybe like until about seven years ago that I really started taking YouTube much more serious. And I really focused and I tried, 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 posted a lot of material, tried to get better. And guess what? The results kind of went like this for me. And that's no different than, you know, learning mathematics. If you do a little bit of math here and there, you're probably going to get very kind of subpar results. But if you really want to learn math, you got to really, you know, focus and be committed over a long period of time to grow your math skills, all right? So again, anything you do in this world is going to require commitment, time, focus, and uh, don't give up, right? That's the uh, main kind of idea of my channel. I really try to take, I really try to make math clear and understandable and interesting, but uh, I need your support to reach as many people as possible on YouTube. So I'm asking you, if you don't mind, hit that subscribe button, it really does help me out. And if you're gonna do that, hit that notification bell as well so you can get my latest videos. Now, if you really wanna learn math from me, you gotta check out my full main math courses. You'll find links to those in the description of this video. And uh, a great course to kind of review the things that I'm talking about, uh, not only in this particular video, but just kind of overall general, let's say like high school level mathematics, is my math skills rebuilder course, right? Here I cover basic math, algebra, geometry, and a ton of other stuff, a ton of other stuff as well. Okay, so now let's go ahead and apply all this knowledge that uh, we just kind of reviewed to this problem right here. Okay, so we have the cube root of 80. Now, I just kind of showed you uh, a lot of principles of radicals, right, and uh, square roots using a square root uh, example, right, like the square root of 20. But this, uh, these properties also apply to cube roots. It doesn't uh, make a difference, you know, what um, this number is right there. Okay, so what do you think we should do here? Well, again, we're not using our calculator, but uh, what we probably should do is think of factors of 80, right? So instead of, uh, let's go back to this problem, the square root of 20, we were looking for what we call perfect squares, things that we can take the square root of, like the square root of four as a factor of 20, right? So we broke up the square root of 20 as the square root of four times five, because we know we can take the square root of four, right? That's what we're looking for. We're looking for factors of four. But here we're looking for not square, or we're looking for factors of 20, excuse me, that we can take the square root of, right? But here we now have to kind of change our thinking into cube roots. So what are cube roots? Well, let's go ahead and just take a look at some numbers. Two to the third power, I'm sorry, not cube root, but uh, powers of three, right? So if I um, take two and I take it to the third power, I get eight. So the cube root of eight is what it's two. Okay, so eight is a great factor to look for, and obviously we have it right here. Now another um, third power, right, would be th uh, three to the third power. This is a nice easy factor, so that's 27. So if we had 27 as a factor of this number, well, that might be something really good to break up this number in. But uh, here, hopefully, it's pretty obvious that we want to break up 80 uh, uh, using the factor of eight because eight is a lovely uh, power of three, okay? And this is gonna come in really handy, and I'm gonna show you that right now. Okay, so the cube root of 80 is equal to what? Well, I'm gonna think of 80 now as eight times 10, because I wanna use this eight. So eight times 10 is 80. So the cube root of 80 is equal to what? Well, it's gonna be equal to the cube root of uh, eight times 10. But again, you wanna be thinking in terms of cube roots because 80 is the same thing as two to the third power times 10. And I know I could take the cube root of this thing right here, two to the third power. I could just take that to the one third power. Of course, my answer is gonna be equal to two, or I just recognize that two to the third power is eight. So the cube root of eight is two. Okay, so hopefully you're not that confused. And now let's go ahead and put this all together to solve the problem. Okay, so the cube root of 80 is equal to what? Well, I'm gonna think of 80 again as eight times 10. So we have the cube root of eight times 10. Now I can break up this uh, cube root into its own separate radicals, right? So I'm breaking up the factors here and I'm just you know, basically doing the same thing as I did with the square root of 20 example. All right, so the cube root of eight times 10 is equal to the cube root of eight times the cube root of 10. And I know that the cube root of eight is two, right? So this is gonna be two times the cube root of 10. That is uh, the answer fully simplified without using a calculator. Okay, now I know I covered a lot 
And uh, the reason why I did that is because, you know, I wanted you to walk away, uh, for those of you that actually, you know, stuck with me through this entire video, I wanted you to walk away knowing a lot about radicals, rational exponents, their associated properties. Now, there's more uh, to know here, okay? But uh, if you understand everything that I covered, you know, that's a lot, okay? So if you truly want to understand not only uh, square roots and radicals, you know, any level of mathematics, you can. But, you you know, you got to uh, kind of respect the fact that there uh, is a lot to learn. And you got to just do it one step at a time. And those steps take time, right? So there really there is no rushing uh, learning mathematics. And once you understand something, if you truly want to make it a, sk a skill that you have, you got to practice, practice, practice. Okay, so with all that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your math adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.